द्वारका डेली and this job is in noida as per as okay okay no that is not a problem so uh, uh, has anybody asked you to report to office daily it's not like no, no, that no no i am just sharing okay that's that's not a problem uh so rithik let's begin with your introduction first before we uh, go ahead with the technical discussion and you can also tell me uh, about the uh, different devops automation tools which are which you have used in your current project and your uh, roles and responsibilities which you are doing in your current uh, project so as of now i am not working anywhere my last working day was 4th of feb so i was working with mdocs previously on the payroll of service software private limited so mm-hmm. my project there was cloud migration program in which uh, there were 7000 applications in which 4000 were supposed to be migrated to azure cloud so the contract was distributed between uh, five companies one was mdocs one was accenture one was ibm one was microsoft and one other so the applications belong to AT&T, so they were trying to reduce their mm-hmm. data centers from 23 to 7 to mm-hmm. save their cost. So uh, we had a target architecture according to which we used to create the resources for the production environment in Azure Cloud and then move everything to cloud as per the target architecture. And the target architecture was uh, given by the application team. So my task uh, was to create the IDO onboarding. Uh, that means the onboarding of an application to the azure so that was an automated process so after that uh, i did auto uh, automation so two environments used to be created in azure uh, by themselves and after that my task was to create the poc non prod and prod environments and after that the application cutover was done i mean when it was delivered so uh, then poc environment was uh, destroyed other project was a bssc project uh, which was mdocs internal product so my task was to Uh, i mean daily we had a meeting in the morning time and uh, all the changes which were done by the software developers were pushed to the nexus from there they were pushed to the bit bucket and we were given a word document according to which we had to change the code and push that uh, code uh, uh, using jenkins uh, manually one was one build was in uh, morning time and one was in the afternoon so that was about my bssc project previously i was working with kmg it services gurgaon so after that i joined cloud was introduced there so they had several clients one was uh, i mean and i was a deployment engineer there i used to go on the deportation and uh, uh, various uh, types of activities were assigned to me along with their cloud team my task was to adhere to what they are asking and help them in deploying things so that was the kmg So there we were using AWS and in uh, Amdocs so we, I was using Azure. Okay, great. So you um, have already worked on uh, multiple cloud uh, platforms. Uh, yeah. Yes. So in Azure, I didn't have the full access, but in AWS. Uh, no worries. But then at least you have clarity on the different services in Azure and Amdocs. उट uh, what is the total years of experience which you have 
five years and ten months of uh, total experience. So I started my career with uh, from HCL Technologies, but uh, there also I was a third party resource. So my I started my career in uh, desktop support, and then uh -huh. I moved to a project which was in uh, DVR. So that was a US based project in which uh, I was a technical support engineer. And after that, uh, I did CCNA, and I was back in operations. So I used to handle HCL networks, internal networks. And then uh, after that, I switched to Cisnet Global Technologies as as a full time uh, network engineer. But when I joined the KMG, so there were more of it was basically a software development company. So initially, there were on prem servers. So in that company, the network part was not that much. but uh, servers and deployments were part was there and cloud was also introduced so my profile got uh, transi transition from there from networking to cloud okay so uh, as we here at magic we uh, at magic pencil we are a service based company where we are providing it solutions to mainly the uh, fintech domain companies like most of our clients they are either into asset management or capital management mm -hmm. and uh, All our customers they have their infrastructure hosted on either of the cloud platforms. You will find, you will either find Azure or GCP or AWS. Okay, we do not have any on-prem uh, environment. Yeah, 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 got it. Then, depending on project to project, we are using different uh, automation tools for configuration management and even for creating the infrastructure. Like in most of the projects, we are using Terraform. Uh, yeah. But then in some of the projects we are using Azure AR templates. Mm -hmm. If you are aware of that service, also we have a similar service in AWS. We call it Cloud Formation. So in Cloud Formation and ARM templates, I don't have experience. So I used to migrate the applications using Terraform. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Then uh, uh, in for configuration management, uh, we are using Ansible in some of the projects and. Uh, In I guess in Manalu we are using Chef, but where I uh, where I am uh, deployed I am using Ansible. Yes. Then uh, in one of the projects the entire uh, the entire application is containerized, so we are using GKE, which is Google's managed service for Kubernetes. Yes. So we are making use of that. And for uh, CI/CD automation we are uh, using GitLab in one of the accounts, and on the other places we are using Azure DevOps. So uh, this is just a brief layout of the different of projects and the kind of tools that we are using here at Magic Pencil. So, uh, uh, like I mentioned, with Pick, everything is on cloud. Like end of the day, whatever you automate, that will land up over cloud. So you know, having good uh, knowledge on these the basic concepts of cloud computing becomes very important. Okay. Yes. Uh, all right. So, uh, if we let's say that uh, you have a requirement or request from a customer who wants to deploy an application on cloud on any of the cloud platforms, either Azure or AWS. Let's uh, consider AWS. And uh, now you want to design an architecture for that application in such a way which will provide a highly available, scalable, and a fault-tolerant environment. So, how do you think? What are services can you use to achieve this? What are the things uh, which strike your mind when you hear the terms like fault tolerant, highly available, and scalable in cloud? Fault tolerance means uh, if any fault is uh, there and if an application is vulnerable to go down, so that should not happen for the business continuity. And uh, other, please pardon the other terms. Um. High high availability. High availability means the application is available twenty four cross seven cross three sixty five no matter what is going at the backend. And the third one. Scalable. Scalability means the, I mean the increasing and decreasing of the resources utilization. I mean the capacity of the resources which we are deploying according to the. Uh, Uh, requirements of the load. If the load is high, so I mean the servers are increasing by them themselves. And when right. So, what are the services which you can use to achieve all these three uh, parameters? So, let's say I want to deploy an application which is highly secure. So, I will follow three tier architecture for that. Uh, keeping that cost, uh, I want to keep the costing tab 
part aside so mm-hmm. i w- please assume a situation where the costing is not a limitation so i will have a discussion with the the client whatever their requirements are after that a detailed documentation will be made and after that i will take the help of the bas so in every software company there are business analyst who design the target architecture on ms visio so at the first place so the ms visio will be uh, uh, i mean target architecture will be designed and it will be passed through the team leaders and managers and, and then we will do the feasibility checks and the cost uh, related that's okay right? like i just want to understand the different services in cloud which you can make use of for providing highly available and for tolerant demand what can you use so we can uh, use ec2 instances uh, based on the capacity uh, as per our requirement according as well as we will use the load balancers auto scaling for auto i mean scalability right. And so you are also scaling uh, from the part of your uh, like make sure that your environment is highly scalable. Yes. Load balancers will ensure that even in case of fault tolerance, your services are up. Hmm. And for security, and, uh, and for security, we will use uh, those NACLs and uh, security groups. Correct. And, and how can you ensure that the environment is highly available? How can you make sure that the EC2 instances which you are creating they are uh, highly available? Uh, we will create disaster recovery if the costing is not an issue. Uh, DR is different, but let's say you have created an SIT environment or a prod account. But uh, in Amdocs, I was asked to for two applications. I was supposed to create DRs for the backup client. I asked me for that. for high availability yeah that's part of your dr but uh, for high availability you can make sure that when you are creating instances like let's say you are also making use of uh, auto scaling group then the instances should spin up in different uh, availability zones so yeah uh, in, uh, so that is the i mean basic when uh, it is recommended when we are starting with load balancers and auto scaling so yes uh, to I mean, deploy them in different availability zones. So you mentioned that you can use uh, security groups and uh, macros for uh, for uh, for NACLs uh, for uh, it will provide an additional security because it is deployed on the subnet level. So what is the difference between the two? Like what security groups do and why? One is stateful and one is one. One. Oh, mm-hmm. one is a stateless. Uh, security groups are deployed on EC2 instances if inbound traffic is allowed. outbound traffic is automatically allowed without any restriction and if we use nacls then in that case uh, the outbound traffic also needs to be uh, i mean uh, we have to tell the outside traffic is also uh, restricted and we have to explicitly tell tell where, how the traffic will move outside so nacls are uh, deployed on the subnet level and uh, that the other one security groups are uh, applied on the ec2 instances so if we apply both so the ec2 instances get a double layer security good okay and uh, have you ever worked on uh, cloudwatch cloudwatch uh, i mean specifically i have not worked but attached cloudwatch to the ec2 instances and then uh, uh, i mean basic monitoring i have done from the cloudwatch so 5 minutes monitoring is uh, already present there without any cost but if you want to do the cloud cloud watch for every minute to get the logs so for that part uh, we have to pay to aws and the memory metric is a custom metric for that we have to write the script so that other than that all the metrics are uh, already present okay. like networking and disk and all that stuff cpu okay okay and um uh, uh for uh, configuration management or which automation tool have you used i'm sorry i missed that have you ever used ansible yes uh, okay. ansible i have so while, uh, but not production level okay no worries so uh, at the time of running an ansible playbook you must have seen something like gathering facts comes on the terminal screen 
Can you tell me what are these gathering? Gathering what facts are, are the data you are collecting from the nodes. Gather facts uh, like they are all their information, including IPs and all that stuff. That is known as the gather facts. So Ansible will work on the push-based mechanism, and it's an agent less to less. Uh, I mean, it is easier than Chef because in Chef we have ad additional server. Okay. And uh, any idea on the uh, module which uh, uh, collects all these uh, facts from the different nodes? Uh, right now I don't uh, remember. No worries. Um, so let's say you have want to encrypt a particular file in uh, Ansible. So how can you do that? Let's say there's a variables file where you have stored some secretive information. Now you want to encrypt that. So any idea how can you do encryption in Ansible? I have done that around uh, when I was working in KMG, but <laughs> right now I am uh, unable to recollect. In Ansible, there are various uh, services like uh, 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 passwordless authentication and encryption. Or so I need to go through all those. those okay, things okay, no worries. Um, uh, do you have any idea around uh, Docker containers? Yes. Sir. Uh, have you ever uh, um, created an application running on a container on any EC2 instance or your Azure VM? In, uh, I mean, EC2 instance I have created, but I was a part of the team, uh, not individual. Okay. Hmm. Uh, do you understand port mapping in containers? Support mapping is something uh, in which we can uh, do the port mapping like uh, if say it's an HTTP application so from it we mm -hmm. want to do the port forwarding to any random port uh, let's mm -hmm. say 5000 so for that uh, we use uh, port mapping oh, so fine. first one is the host and second one is the container that thing should be remembered always I mean when I, we are assigning the port now so AT should come first that is the host port and container port let's say is 5000 so that's the thing Hello. okay okay all right uh, so you mentioned that you used uh, jenkins for uh, automating your ci cd pipelines yes so uh, can you just uh, tell me the workflow of a pipeline that you created uh, using jenkins I don't want to know what you have written exactly, but just the workflow of uh, how are, uh, things automated, what are the different stages in your uh, pipeline? So uh, that uh, the Jenkins I had deployed in uh, uh, back in uh, PMG. So the stages were like uh, uh, plan, uh, test and build. So there in total there were four uh, stages and uh, we had used the shell scripting for that and the other was one was using docker uh, uh, commands as well so that uh, i had done in uh, kmg okay and uh, what about the other stages of the pipeline like you mentioned that you had uh, Okay, thank you so much for your time, Ritwik. Have a good day ahead. Uh, okay, thank you.